Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Jeff, and welcome to Ed Family, where our goal is to support our students with finding out what they're good at so that they can do good with it. And teachers play an important role in this journey, as do student teachers. So today we have a great topic, advice to student teachers from a former student teacher. And I got to say, I have the great privilege to welcoming here on Ed Family, uh, my previous student teacher, but now currently teacher, Miss Christina Campos. A warm welcome to you, Christina. Thank you for joining us on Ed Family. If you could just quickly tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, so I was Dr. Kim's student teacher. I attended Cal State University Fullerton, um, where I got my bachelor's in history. And then I attended Cal State University Fullerton again, where I went through their credentials program. Um, I currently work up north. It was a really big journey, but really exciting. And now I currently work as a sixth grade humanities teacher at a middle school and high school. Yes, uh, Christina Campos was one of those student teachers where I was like, after we finished, I was like, just hoping, you know, there'd be an opportunity in our district and I, I wanted her to work in our district. That was at least my desire, but she had another calling and now she's blessing so many other students. But uh, that's the kind of positive impression that she left with me and with other teachers on my campus and the students and our school, so many great impressions. So, uh, Christine, let's go ahead and begin with, like, why, why did you become a teacher? Well, when I was going into college, I actually wanted to be a counselor. I wanted to be a school site counselor because I grew up in a really rough situation. Um, I was in the lower class, um, and there was a lot going on at home. Um, so I was going through a lot growing up and I felt like I didn't really have a whole lot of people who were there for me. And I, a lot of it was, I just didn't know the resources that I had. So I wanted to be that change for the youth. Um, so I wanted to go into counseling, but then I took a history class, um, cause you're required to, for your general education in college. And I just fell in love with the subject and the passion of the teacher who I had the privilege of being taught by. And so I thought, oh no, is like, is counseling really something I wanna do forever? Or do I wanna do something that I have this passion for, that I have this zest for? So to me, I felt like being able to combine the two worlds of being able to help people and be a huge impact in students' lives and having that passion for history combined would be to be a teacher. So I took a lot of thinking and it took a lot of time, but I decided that that's where my heart belongs in teaching. Yes, I remember you sharing how in your youth, how much you enjoyed being in school and how school was such a good place uh, for you. And then, and so glad that uh, you found your passion in teaching and now are channeling your energy, all your en good energy into teaching. That's wonderful to hear. That's definitely one of your strengths. What would you say are some additional strengths that allowed you to be such a strong student teacher and teacher today? Because there's a lot of student teachers coming in, they have their various, very, but what, what would you say are some of your strengths? I would say definitely my compassion. Um... I think a lot of people kind of forget that the the type of compassion and nurture that children need. Like, I think a lot of people going into the credentials program, they have compassion of some sort. But I feel like sometimes you have to take that step back and realize, okay, this is the compassion that humans need. But I think kids, especially because I work with um, people who are like 10 and 11, they're going through a lot. So they need a different type of compassion and nurturing. And I would say another really, really big thing is definitely my drive and ambition. Um, the credentials program was honestly not as easy as I thought it would be. There was definitely a lot of difficulties or it was a lot more work than I thought it would be. 
But because I'm so driven and because I'm so ambitious and because I love learning, I think that that helped me out a lot. Yeah, those are two really great points there. Uh, first of all, that uh, socio-emotional um, passion that you had uh, and socio-emotional learning and skill that you had to connect with students. I would often see you so patient with students that uh, it was hard to be patient with. I mean, you know, we can all be patient one time, two times, but over and over and over again, your patience just never ended. I, I just marveled at that. And so uh, that was definitely a strength that I saw, as you mentioned. And then secondly, um, your, you talked about your ambition and drive. Uh, it's just in so many places, just the student teaching work alone is a lot, I would say. But I would, I would say, uh, Christina, you weren't just a um, student teacher. You were uh, kind of an emerging leader, I would say, on our campus, volunteering to provide professional development, lead events. Tell, tell me more about that. Like, What gave you the strength and ability and skill to be able to do those kinds of things? Uh, for me, I would definitely say it's the love of the community. And I love, I love people and I love being able to offer whatever I can do to be a part of the community. Um, because for me in being a leader, it's not about um, being ahead or on top of anything else or anyone else. It's about being with the people um, and being a part of something that's so much greater than yourself. And if doing that means creating a video for open house or doing that means um, attending uh, meetings for students who are bilingual and need extra assistance, then I would gladly do that. I think to me, being a part of a, a community of educators is, how do I say it? It definitely makes your heart like you have to have your heart in such a good place and it makes your heart really warm. Mm -hmm. You know, at our, uh, at our site, we often called ourselves a family and you're definitely like, I think had that, you, you shared in that vision of, of family, the way that you interacted with one another, the way that you uh, volunteered for events, the way that you served, uh, not just uh, students, but also other educators. Uh, and so I know that uh, not only was I very impressed, of course, but other faculty members, administrators, they knew you, they knew you by name, and they wanted you on their team uh, regularly. They said, is Christina coming? Is Christina going to do this? Uh, you left that kind of reputation uh, with us. A lot of times students, teachers can come onto campus and uh, it's very frequent. Nobody know, really knows who they are, you know, um, or, or they might not leave a very positive impression, but it was the opposite with you. Uh, very positive impression. And I know that many of the other faculty and administrators there are wanting to continue to work with you uh, if possible. They had that desire and interest, I know. Uh, and, and, and once again, although there were many strengths, I know that sometimes uh, in the midst of the work, there are also challenges that come about as well. So what were some challenges that came along with student teaching and how did you face them? Okay, so for this one, I kind of want to divide it into like two categories. One is... Um like general challenges that I feel like most student teachers would probably face. And then my own personal challenges that people probably wouldn't necessarily go through. So for general challenges, I would say being able to have time management is really important. And I know it's difficult. And I know when you're in the credentials program and you're student teaching and you're doing this, that, and the other, maybe you have a job, it can be really hard to kind of balance all of that. So finding ways to mediate that. And for me, that meant um, I worked at a museum, but I had to, well, I didn't have to, I chose to leave to kind of figure out that balance and figure out what would work in my schedule. And I actually met, with, I was talking about this with Dr. Kim and we had a meeting about it and he talked to me for maybe, I don't know, it was like an hour about, okay, what are the pros and cons of this? And kind of talking me through it, never giving me the answer, but talking me through it and helping me come up with the answer myself. Um, so, that was really helpful. Um, another thing I would say, I had one more, one more general one. 
I think it was the job time management. And then if you have a job thinking about whether or not it's worth having while you're pursuing your credentials. And then generally um, for me, there were a couple of things that were really stressful um, during that time. I, well, I didn't have a job, but I was also living in my car at the time um, because just things at home, as I kind of alluded to earlier when I was growing up, not the best. Um, but I found ways around that that worked for me. I would go to the school <laughs> to do my work. Um, I would use my hotspot on my phone if I was in my car. Um, also, another thing about like not to make light of the situation because it's very complicated, but um, being able to quit my job actually helped me out a little bit because I wasn't constantly like going from one, like going from school to going to work to going to my car. Um, so that kind of helped in like a weird way. Um, but then I ended up getting really sick. So I had to go home. But that also ended up working out because while I was home, I was able to heal myself. And I was also able to really like work on the credentials without having to like worry about, okay, like what if my computer dies or things like that? Um, yeah, yeah. I think when I got really sick too, I met, I told Dr. Kim and he was like, do you want to not come in and student teach today? And I was like, no, no, I got it. It's okay. So that goes back to that drive that I have um, and that ambition for sure. But yeah, no matter what you're going through, there are definitely ways to get over it. Um, I now have like my dream job and I'm living in a really beautiful area. Um, I would also like to add, if you are going through anything, there's always ways to get help for it. And also if you're going through anything and it's not as serious as that, or maybe it is as serious as that, definitely communicate with your mentor teacher because there are things that they might just not know. <laughs> so that would be a little advice on that. Oh, wow. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing a little bit of your story uh, with all of us. I know um, I, I didn't know that because I'll tell you this. This was during the stay at home order uh, in uh, the district that I work in, um, because when class was about to start, we, were, we we met online at that time. And uh, who would be there first? Uh, I like to think of myself as a very punctual and early kind of hardworking person, but uh, no, no, Christina Campos would definitely outdo me in, in many situations, arriving there before me, engaging with the students, very engaged in the class, staying after, then there's breaks in between the classes, getting in there early, uh, just continuing to do that. And all the while, um, you know, her background screen, um, you know, it would be like different university settings or at the uh, uh, museum where she worked at. And so I was thinking, oh, look at her providing social capital uh, for the students and giving them the college experience because they can't go out. Little did I know that she was living out of her car and I, I, I didn't, she didn't explain this to me. She never told me until maybe the last couple of weeks. It was almost like the end of our student teaching after a year of working together. She goes, I never told you this, but, but uh, this was my situation. And I just couldn't believe it because um, when, it, when I think about student teaching, even if you have the best situation, it's, it's not easy. And to think that she had gone through her entire student teaching or, mo or the majority of it uh, before getting ill, um, just from the location that she was at. Wow, what a powerful story of resilience. And I'm so glad that you did let me know at the end because it just helped me to appreciate you and your journey so much more. And, uh, and I think that's a part of the reason why I want this story to be known because um, it's a story of resilience, some, a story that many people can be proud of, a story that you can be proud of, and a story that many of us can also learn from, uh, both student teacher, but also mentor teacher, as we think about our student teachers and their life experiences and the things that they're going through and the things that they may be telling and the things that they're not telling us. So thank you for sharing a little bit of that story uh, on our Ed Family channel. Um, now, imagine this, uh, Ms. Campos, now it's Ms. Campos, the educator, uh, favorite teacher, I'm sure, uh, famous teacher at her site.
but uh, what advice would you give to that student teacher way back when just starting the credential program? If you could go back and give her some advice at that time, at that moment, uh, what would be something you'd say to her? Ooh, probably don't say yes to everything. <laughs> because <laughs> I know you're smiling because uh, I said if I – unless I absolutely positively could not do it, I said yes to everything. I think there's like less than a handful of things that I had to say no to. Um, but while it was very helpful and really nice to attend certain things to understand how the district works or certain schools worked or our school worked, um, I know maybe well, 50 percent of the things that were offered were optional maybe that much um so i would i i went to everything i would say maybe don't go to a few of the things take that time for yourself because one thing that i was not the best at was um i was great at social emotional care for students and other people not so much for myself so I would say definitely sit back and relax a little bit. It's okay to take time for yourself um, and do something that you enjoy. Maybe go for a walk or draw or just get a cup of coffee. Just like take time for yourself. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Really? It's okay to have a cup of coffee every now and then and go on a walk? You're, you're serious <laughs> about this? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Yes, you know, and, and uh, you know, when I work with Miss Campbell, she would regularly ask, like, hey, how, she would ask me how I'm doing, you know, and and uh, and so she's definitely that kind of caring person for others. But I think that's really great advice to take care of yourself because you're so important to so many people, as educators, student teachers, whoever we are. Where there's so many roles that we have, we have to keep ourselves strong, and a part of that is excellent self care. I know that's definitely one reason at family also post things on hiking and mountain biking, because I just want to remind people, hey, take care of yourself because you're super important. And this isn't just for one day, one year, but this is for a season. This is a marathon that we want to be strong for others and leave a generational impact uh, for others. So I'm so glad that you would give yourself that advice back then. And I, if I had known your situation, I definitely would have not allowed you. Even if, even if you said, yes, I said, you know what? No, I don't think not this. Uh, but I'm glad that you're uh, knowing, having some margin and knowing how to say yes and no to things. That's a very, that's a skill as well. Uh, and that's a self-awareness uh, skill as well. Uh, I know on the Ed Family channel, there might be some uh, new teachers, emerging teachers, student teachers, maybe people just thinking about teaching, about to start. Is there any advice that you would give to emerging uh, student teachers or new student teachers or people thinking about going into teaching? Um, I would actually give them the same advice I give myself. Take time for yourself. I know when you're in it, it's really hard to, and you feel like going back to the time management thing, maybe you don't feel like you have enough time to do any, everything, but you have time. Like you'll, if you, if you don't do it, you'll probably look back and say, you know what? I could have, I could have had time to take care of myself. Cause like Dr. Kim was saying, if you're not taking care of yourself, it becomes a lot harder to take care of others. So you have to make sure you're well. So that way you can be the leader of your classroom and you can be the leader of these students who need you to be strong and healthy, not just physically, but also mentally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think anyone starts their student teacher teaching year or their first year and thought, oh, that was such a easy year. So learning those practices now to take care of yourself well and to take the rest when you need to take the rest uh, that's just really wise advice. And I don't hear that advice often, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And the worth of each individual, their intrinsic worth, that they're worth it, that they would take care of themselves, work hard, of course, but then having moments where they also take rest. Yeah, uh, I do have another thing. I would oh, ask. yes. Um, I was fortunate enough <laughs> to be presented numerous opportunities to either attend certain events or be parts of stuff within the community, such as open house. You gave me the opportunity to be a part of that or um, the, what is it? The, the soapbox competition that as well. Too. Yes. The ELT task force, so much. I was given so many opportunities and I'm so grateful for that. 
But I don't know if everybody gets those opportunities from their mentor or other staff. So I would definitely recommend asking if you see that there's a flyer for open house or you see that there's an email floating around for open house, ask what you can do to help. Maybe it's something as small as making a video. Maybe it's leading the open house within the classroom yourself. Um, I know there's also usually you get like a mass invitation via email. So definitely ask about that as well. Um, yeah, I would say just ask because sometimes the opportunities are there and sometimes you don't necessarily, sorry, he was leaving. Sometimes you just have to ask. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because it's like two sides of the coin. On one side, it's that self-care. And on the other side, it's, it is taking the initiative and saying yes to the things that you do want to do because there are cool opportunities that can help you to grow. Uh, there's, I think, so many uh, different things that you've got to participate in that um, it's like its own kind of professional development. It's like its own class. You learn a, a whole new set of skills that now in your new place, you can employ if that's what you wanted to do. So it's, it is that balance, isn't it, of taking mm -hmm. care of yourself well, but at the same time, saying yes to the right things. In fact, uh, what, what's that phrase I sometimes like to say? Um, say no to the good so that you can say yes to the best. Mm -hmm. And so it's figuring out what is that best and then saying yes to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Christina Campos, uh, once again, uh, thank you so much for being willing to be on our Ed Family channel. I think you might be my first official, official guest for this channel. So uh, big congratulations and thanks to you. And uh, once again, congratulations on completing an amazing student teaching year. And also finally, um, before the year was finished, getting hired at another school and actually having multiple offers, uh, including uh, you know an opportunity even to interview in the district that I work in. That's what you wanted to do. So big congratulations to you currently, uh, continuing to make the difference in where you're at. And thank you so much. You're welcome. It was nice getting to talk to you. And thank you for having me. My pleasure.